if what you're about to see, the debate between Ken Ham and Bill Nye, if it were a sandwich, it would be ham on Nye. <laughs> So this is, this is the most troubling thing you do, Mr. Ham. Climate change is the most serious problem facing humankind. And so by, uh, in, by trying to convince young people that climate change is not real is very serious because they're going to have to grow up and deal with it. Actually, we're saying climate change is real. The Middle Ice Age was a local phenomenon. Bill, we're saying climate change is real. So is it serious? Climate change? Yes. The, the, what you have to do then is say, what, 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 why has climates, why have they changed? Climates change all the time. Let me rephrase it for you. Human-caused climate change is very serious. Well, there's a lot of this debate is, about that. The there's, worst a, thing there's, a, there's a lot of scientists who would disagree with that. In it's fact, we very, have PhD scientists on our staff that would disagree with that. We have other PhD scientists. Those, your scientists and your staff, as respectful as I can be, are incompetent. You mean, oh, you mean Dr. Nathaniel Jensen, who has a they're, PhD they're from Harvard University? He's incompetent? Dr. From George. what I've seen on television, he is. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, it's here? Oh, here we are. Uh, tell me, Dr. Georgia Purdom, who has a PhD in molecular genetics from Ohio State, she's incompetent? Certainly seems to be. Well, then, uh, two observations for your consideration. Number one, Global warming is the greatest threat against humankind. Apparently, Bill Nye doesn't know how to spell ISIS. Comment number two, how convenient. You can reject whatever your opponent says by simply ad hominem, by calling them names. That's what Bill Nye just did. All of your doctors, yeah, they've got degrees, but they're simply incompetent. Well, isn't that convenient? Unfortunately for Bill Nye, it's not true. Permit me to introduce to you a former Answers in Genesis scientist who is now working at the Institute for Creation Research Dr. Jason Lyle uh, doing a presentation on knowing that God exists because we understand, at least a little bit, math. And you determine for yourself if all of these creationists are dodos. What is math? <laughs> Mathematics is the study of the relationship between numbers. That's, how, that's just the dictionary definition of it. It's the study of the relationship, how numbers relate to each other. Well, what are numbers? That sounds like a dummy question, doesn't it? But you know, we all sort of know what numbers is, but define one. Yeah, it's kind of hard. And I look through several different dictionaries, and most of them, they don't agree on what a, a number is. It's hard to define. Sometimes these things that are very simple, very basic to us, are the hardest to define. The best I could find is numbers are a concept of quantity. I think that's probably the best definition that is out there. Numbers are a concept of quantity. So when you're thinking in terms of the number, you know, you have a quantity of objects. The number is the concept of that quantity. It's not the objects. It's the concept of the quantity of objects that you have there. And so the number is abstract. Numbers are concepts. They're abstract in nature, not physical, right? They exist in the mind. They're concepts. That's where concepts exist. You can't stub your toe on a number or pull one out of the refrigerator. They're not made up of atoms. They're abstract. Now you say, well, that... I mean, I, you, can't, I, you can't literally see a number, and people might say, well, I see the number three right there. But that's not really the number three, because if it is, I've just destroyed the number three. Children will now have to count one, two, four, and so on. <laughs> three is gone. <laughs> that was a representation of the number three. That was a numeral. Written numerals are not numbers. They're representations of numbers, okay? Writing down three doesn't mean that that is literally three. It's a symbol. It represents three, just like a picture of a horse symbolizes a horse, but it's not the horse. Laws of math are conceptual, okay? Concepts exist in the mind. Well, where did laws of math come from? Did they evolve? Now, this is interesting because, of course, my secular colleagues they want to suck the, the creative juice from God out of everything, right? Yeah, all these wonderful things in the physical world that God has made, and they want to say, well, you know, mutations and natural selection produced that organism. Laws of math can't evolve because they don't change. I don't, I don't know any secularist that believe this, that the number seven evolved from the number three. <laughs> <laughs> Seven's always been seven, three's always been three. And so you, you cannot explain math by evolution. 
you might find evolutionary biologists, evolutionary geologists, evolutionary astronomers. When it comes to math, everyone's a creationist. Isn't that interesting? You won't find any evolutionary mathematicians. They don't exist. You might find evolutionists who, you know, who use math and so on, but they don't believe that math evolved. Were, were laws of math created by people? Well, laws of math are formulated by people. We wrote down, we invented the notation, you know, that's why three looks like that. And, but we didn't create numbers. Numbers existed before people did. And laws of math existed before people did. As one example, the planets, the way they orbit the sun, they follow a particular law. They follow Kepler's laws. But Kepler didn't make those laws. He discovered them. And the planets orbited perfectly well before human beings were created. <laughs> right? two days before human beings were created. But anyway, they orbited perfectly fine. So the form formulas existed before people discovered them. I mean, tri triangles still added up to, you know, the, the sum of the squares of the two sides before Pythagoras discovered that. Tri he didn't create triangles. Laws of math are not created by people. They didn't evolve. Do they come from the universe? Now, this is a common one. People say, well, that's a property of the universe. But I don't think you can make that argument. For one thing, the universe is constantly changing. It's expanding and stars explode and things like that. If laws of math were based on the universe, we'd expect them to be changing too. But they don't. So laws of math don't reflect the universe. Now, there is a relationship between the universe and laws of math. We'll get into that a little bit later. But um, you can't say they're created from the, from the universe. You, in fact, 2 plus 2 would equal 4 even if there were no universe. It's, it's, it's a transcendental truth, isn't it? It goes beyond uh, nature. I want to say that laws of math stem from the mind of God. That's the only explanation that makes sense. Math is God's way of thinking about quantities. And that makes sense. That, that, that makes sense of the properties of laws of mathematics. Because if you think about it, laws of mathematics are conceptual, universal, invariant, exceptionless entities. Let's go through one of each at a time. Conceptual, they exist in a mind. They're abstract. You can't touch a law of mathematics, okay? You can't literally see one. You can write down a representation of one, but they're not physical. They're conceptual. They exist in a mind. They're universal, meaning laws of mathematics apply everywhere. Doesn't matter where you go. Two plus two still equals four in Europe, okay? They're invariant. They don't change with time. It's not like, you know, well, the Pythagorean theorem works on Tuesdays, sure, but everything's out on Fridays. <laughs> Who knows? And they're exceptionless, right? It's not like, well, you know, 2 plus 2 normally equals 4, but in this case, it, it didn't. All right, try, try to explain the bank error that way and see if they buy that. The reason you're missing millions of dollars, well, it didn't add, it just didn't add this time. <laughs> I don't think they'd buy that. They're exceptionless. And these things make sense in light of the fact that laws of mathematics stem from the mind of God, because God's thoughts are conceptual, because all thoughts are conceptual. God is omnipresent. And so naturally, his thoughts would, would be sovereign over the entire universe. So laws of math are going to be the same everywhere because God's the same everywhere. Uh, God does not change with time because he's beyond time, and therefore his thoughts will not change with time. So laws of mathematics don't change with time. And God is sovereign over everything, and so that's why laws of mathematics are exceptionless. And so if you think about it, the, the properties, the existence and properties of laws of mathematics and properties of numbers make sense in terms of the Christian worldview. But the naturalist has a problem. The person who says, well, there's no God. Everything's evolved by chance. He's got a huge problem because on the one hand, he knows laws of mathematics are conceptual. They exist in a mind. We know that. They're not, they're not something you can stub your toe on. They're not physical. They're mental constructs. But they weren't created by human minds because they were around before human beings were around. And see, even secularists will acknowledge that. Of course... You know, the planets orbited the sun perfectly fine before people. That law still worked. But they've got a problem because they don't believe in minds before human minds. See, the Christian, we have an answer to that. We can say there is a mind before human minds, and that mind is the mind of God. And so we can have laws. We can have conceptual laws before people in the Christian worldview. But the naturalists can't have that. They cannot make sense of laws of mathematics in their worldview. They accept them and move on and dismiss the inconsistency. <laughs> that was Dr. Jason Lyle refuting Dr. Bill Nye. He's not a doctor! Oh, that's right. He's not a doctor.